Hello guys and welcome to Program Artist. In this episode I will talk about error handling separation. So why should you consider separating your error handling code from the main code? Well, first of all, you sometimes want to look at the code and immediately see the, the logic itself, the code that does the work it's supposed to do, and the part where you're handling some kind of errors. Uh, like if something happened wrong inside the, the straightforward code, the, the correct code, you would like to see the error handling in a separate way, in a separate place. Because when you're mixing them, mixing the logic and the error handling together, you're confused because you're constantly switching from the, the correct path of the code and the error handling code. So uh, this switching uh, this context switch between the logic and the error handling is uh, very confusing and it may introduce new bugs that may not be there if you write straight for a code without thinking about errors. So let's see an example. It's quite simple and you're probably doing it already. Just pay attention to what you're doing. So uh, suppose we have a function uh, that, uh, I don't know, do stuff okay that does stuff yeah and it calls a function do logic okay so do logic is another function do logic that does some logic but in this case this logic throws an error okay very simple it throws an error in some case in our case, it always throws an error. So, we wouldn't like the do stuff function to throw an error. So, we're gonna try to do the logic and catch, catch the error. Oh my god. Okay, and catch the error. And here, we're gonna handle the error. So, we're already separating the logic, okay, the logic that's here, and the error handling that's here. But I'm gonna do another step, and I'm gonna actually handle, I'm gonna create a function, handle error, and it will be export function, handle error, okay, and in this case, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna log it but you can do whatever you want uh, you can even uh, rethrow the error or you can like return the value that this function returns for instance uh, if the do logic uh, communicates with some kind of server and we're getting a communication error and so we can handle the error by gracefully returning, I don't know, some kind of result that uh, shows the user that uh, that some kind of error happened, okay? Uh, we can return an object that is an error. Uh, if the do stuff is uh, specifying, it always returns some stuff, like uh, it can return uh, true in case it succeeded and false in case it fails. So like, the do logic will return true and handle error will return false. Okay, so usually uh, I'm gonna call it try doing stuff. Okay, so try doing stuff, it tries to do some, the logic, the, the stuff, and if it fails, it will return false. So here I separated the logic itself and their error handling but you can see it also as a separation inside this function the try and the catch it's always it also separates the logic itself from the error handling and you can look at it separately but uh, why it's useful to uh, separate the error handling into another function because if you're like having uh, another uh, function export function try doing other stuff okay so you can try and you can uh, i don't know return do other logic and i'm gonna copy paste
paste it, do other logic, and if we have an error here, maybe, just not always, but maybe, we will be able to handle the same uh, errors uh, with the same way, uh, and it is actually useful to separate this way the error handling into separate functions and handle them uh, in same way in different kind of layers like in the user layer when you're presenting some kind of errors to users you have the error handling functions which present the user with some kind of message boxes uh, or uh, other pop-ups that inform him about this error and if you're doing like inside a layer on a server, uh, this layer of error handling might log there to the log, to the file log, to the database log, and uh, rethrow it or uh, return some other uh, cached result or uh, some kind of other result that you want to, to do in case of an error. So separating the logic from the error uh, gives you the benefit of understanding better the errors and handling them in the same way in many places. Uh, actually, uh, libraries like Angular, uh, there are built-in mechanisms that help you to handle errors uh, inside a specific error handler, and ASP.NET Web API does it as well, and uh, the Express pipeline also, can, you can handle uh, the errors in uh, one unique place inside the pipeline. And in those libraries, once you, you write the error handling uh, code and you plug it in, you can mostly write the, the good code, the code without error handlers, and the error handling uh, methods will be in another place. But as I said, you can do it most of the time because sometimes you would like to uh, to handle uh, more specific errors in that specific place because you can recover from them better because you have more information about it. Like you have the local variables, you know that you're actually doing some kind of uh, database uh, or some other logic uh, and you know how to recover from an error in this specific place. You have watched an episode about error handling separation. Let me know what you think about it by leaving a comment in the comment section down below. You can watch more programming tips videos by clicking over here or you can trust YouTube to know what you really want to see and click over here. If you want to see more code related videos, check out my channel and feel free to subscribe. See you later on Programmarks!